Hello. So today we're going to have a look at the ATR that got updated recently and the reason we're looking at it is because there is still a bug in it and I'm going to work straight towards the bug to show you where the problem is. It's to do with hotel mode and with the engine not spinning up. Okay so we're going to jump straight in the aircraft and we're going to go overhead and we're going to go and turn on the, the batteries which will power up some of the systems around the aeroplane. So we'll turn the nav light on while the uh, batteries are on and arm the uh, emergency exit light. And the main thing we're waiting for here is for the screens to boot up. So it won't take too long. We're not going to do any of the um, guidance systems or anything like that. I just want to show you the mechanical issue with the, um, the hotel mode. So we're just waiting for this to come on. Here we go. So the systems are online. So over in the tablet, you can go to aircraft mode. You can provide ground power. And then above us in the aeroplane, we can now switch on ground power, which provides power to the rest of the aircraft. And at this point, we can go and switch on the prop brake if it will let us and recage it. And it will say prop brake and ready will not be lit. OK. So, if we wanted to start the engines at this point, we could. So we can turn on the fuel pumps. And we're only going to actually start engine number two. Okay, so we're going to turn the ignition to start A and start engine number two. And if we look down, you will see, or you should see, and here we go, here comes some of the problems. Look, NH has just come up. It's gone past 10%. So we can push the uh, fuel condition lever to feather and it will continue on round and once it gets past we're just looking at the needles over here so we've got prop break is actually happening which is good so you will notice overhead this says prop break and not ready okay and by the correct way of doing things, you should be able to press this button in for a second or two, which is the auxiliary, we go and look at the label on it, hydraulic auxiliary pump. And for 15 seconds, that should light up ready, and it doesn't. But if we move this onto auto, so nothing much changes on the gauges. We, all we've done is moved the condition lever forward to auto. And then if we press this again, it comes up on its own if we just hold it down and we get the ready light. Okay, so then we should be able to uncage this and remove the prop brake and recage it. And this should start spinning. And it doesn't. This is a fault. This is a bug in the aircraft and I've tried no end of different ways of dealing with this and none of them work. You can never get the aeroplane to spin up properly. So what we're going to do is go back and restart the simulator and I'm going to show you an alternate way of starting the aeroplane up where we are not going to use hotel mode. Now I'm just going to do this very functionally and we're not going to worry too much about doing everything in exactly the right order and we'll actually go and put the flight plan and stuff in as well because I am proofing basically an alternate startup sequence which doesn't use hotel mode. Okay, so first things first, we go to the tablet, we go to the aircraft, we turn on the ground power. Okay, then we go back overhead and we go and switch on the batteries and that will fire up the aircraft. So we can look down and wait for these screens to boot up. So give it a few moments. As soon as they have booted up, we will jump overhead and turn the external power on. And get rid of the caution. It will keep coming back on during the startup because obviously there are things that are not configured yet. OK, 
Okay, so we have the screens booted up, so we can go back overhead and we can switch on the external power now. We can go and turn on the nav lights. We can turn on the seat belts and arm the emergency exit lights. We can switch on the windshield heating. We can turn on the main oxygen supply. Then back down in the cockpit, we're going to go and configure the, now what's it called? The FGCP, the uh, Flight Guidance Control Panel. I can never get the acronym right. I kind of always say it slightly differently. <laughs> so we can set the heading to the wrong way direction. So once this pops up, so here we go. So we want 222 degrees. So it's on 221 at the moment. So 222 degrees is the wrong way at Stansted. And we're also going to set the altitude target. So we're looking at the number here as we roll it around. I'm going to take it out to say 12,000 feet, just for the purposes of this demonstration. We're not actually going to fly today. We're just going to get the airplane up and running to show you what's involved really. Okay. So then we can come down and press the BRG1 and 2 buttons which put the, the VOR radio indications in the bottom corners of the primary flight display which is perfect. So there we're going to go and program the flight management computer. So we come into here, we go to init, we go to pause init, we pick up the GPS location which populates init pause, then we do sensor init and return. Then we go to the weight section and we long click on each weight. And that populates that for us. We come back. Then we go to performance initialization. Just check we've got the cruise altitude, we have. So come back out there. We can then go to flight plan init and then route and put in our route. So let's pretend we're going from Stansted to Edinburgh. Okay, we can execute that and it will put the route in. We'll pretend we're going via the Trent VOR and put that in the middle of the route and it's the top option. There we go. We can clear out this discontinuity. So then we need to say how we're going to leave Stansted. So we'll leave on runway 22. We'll do the BKY5R standard instrument departure. Okay, and then we can go next page. So there's Edinburgh. We'll select Edinburgh. We'll land on runway 24 at Edinburgh and use the AGP E1E standard terminal arrival route. And we'll execute that. And then we'll just skip down through and remove any discontinuities. Yeah, we're done. Oh, no, there's a one final one at the end there, but I don't think it's that important. Okay, execute. So go to the flight plan. We're looking at the secondary flight plan here. So if we go flight plan, there we go. So that's done. I'm just looking at my checklist once again. So if we press F to come back to here, if you notice at the top of the um, attitude indicator, we can actually go, it will it will display the um, autopilot modes and we can pre-select nav, which will do L nav because we're in FM mode or flight management mode. And we can also say V nav, so it will go, that's your kind of your horizontal or lateral navigation, that's vertical navigation. Uh, if we, we could say heading as well, and it will use heading until it can use L nav. Um, but yeah, so, we're all good. So calibrate the altimeters. So press B to do that. So then we, on the EFIS display, we press the perf button, which changes this. And then it gives us this button to click down here, confirm takeoff data. And it changes the indicator over here to a blue one, which is fine. And then we can see the trim over here. So we need to align it. So I'm just using the elevator trim to move the arrow. Okay, so then we can go back overhead and we're going to get ready to start the engines. So, beacon light goes on. Pumps go to on. Ignition goes to start A. We put start 2 to on. 
we come back down in the cockpit and you can monitor when this goes past 10 percent on the nh we can advance the fuel lever to feather when it gets up to halfway or 60 we can advance it to auto and there we go in exactly the same way we can now start engine number one and you'll see the NH coming up so when it gets past 10% we can move that to there you can also look at the NP so when this gets past I think it's 10% uh, you can move that on to auto as well so 8, 9, 10 there we go move that to auto so now the engines are generating power we can remove the external power from up here and we can remove the ground power from here so then go back overhead and turn the ignition to off because the ignition is now done if we go and quickly look outside you can see we now have the engines running obviously the reason for hotel mode is you can do this without any crew being near when once the propellers start whizzing around um, so we've removed the ground power we've turned the external power oh okay, sorry so transformer rectifier unit we need to go and switch that on next probe heats so we got three probe heats here then we come back down into the cockpit we set the flaps to 15 degrees which is done we go to the serve page of the EFIS display and we set up the transponder so if we wanted it on for example we could do that here we can also set up TCAS which is usually on auto that's all fine and then we can go to the tablet and we can remove the wheel chocks and go back to the pilot position we can take the emergency parking brake off are we rolling yet we're on tow brakes now remember and we've got the propellers whizzing around we can remove the gust lock then control six we're going to go and turn on the taxi and take off lights so that's there turn the landing lights to on which is under there i believe See, let's no that's the wing light sorry the landing lights are there obviously you'd normally do this on the runway along with the strobes okay so if we come off the parking brake now and ease the throttles forwards you can see the aeroplane starts moving so the, the, the final things you're doing are things like setting your target airspeed for VNAV. So we'll set it out to say 150 knots. Again, I'm not referring to any books to do this. I'm just setting some numbers to show you where the controls are more than anything. So there's a lot more to look at. Um, but yeah, it's almost there. It's, all, all I was really pointing out there is you don't have to do ho hotel mode using the prop brake because there is a bug in it. It won't release the prop brake. The prop brake. Interestingly, if you shut the engine down and restart it again, the prop brake will behave. But on the first start, it won't, and it is a bug. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. We're not actually going to fly today. I just thought that would be interesting for you to see that. And this is why we don't worry about hotel mode, because these people have a mind of their own anyway, and they'll walk straight through the propellers no matter what you do. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care.